you are hurting your gameplay in GTA Online. Today we're going over a complete settings guide and I'll be telling you everything you need to change in order to get the most out of both your graphics and your gameplay. Gameplay will be first and for you PC players, graphics will be in the second half of the video. If you enjoy, leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more stuff like this and let's go. Let's start off with a very simple but important one and that's your weapon reticle. It may look a lot cleaner to have it on simple and just have that dot in the middle of your screen, but it's actually pretty important to have it put on complex. The reason for that is the reticle is going to show you your weapon spread. And in a third person shooter, you're going to want to know where your bullets are going to go once the gun starts to recoil. As you can see, the reticle will change for each type of weapon, showing you the spread of the bullets or pellets. So this will help you correctly aim your shots. Now, if you really like the simple reticle and you want to keep it for whatever reason, make sure you've got your reticle size on the lowest it will possibly go. Yes, that is a setting you can change, and if you turn it up too much, you won't even be able to see the enemies. Next is your in-game depth of field effect. This is on by default, and I would recommend turning it off. What this does is blurs everything around whatever you're looking at. Which, yes, that can help you focus on exactly what you're aiming at, but it's going to blur everything else, and that information is pretty important. As you can see on your screen, the camera is focusing on the tree, but you can't see anything else. Now, if we turn this setting off, we can see everything else a lot clearer, which is going to be pretty important. What if an enemy is in our cone of vision, but we can't see it because it's completely blurred out? We don't want that to happen, so I would recommend turning this off. Next one is extremely important, and it's motion blur strength. Turn this all the way down unless you're trying to make your game extremely cinematic. If you don't care about feeling like you're going really, really fast in a car, then just turn this off. If you don't know what motion blur is, whenever you're moving, everything on the outside of your screen is going to become blurry. Developers turn this on by default to make it seem like you're moving a lot faster than you are and to make it feel like you're actually moving fast. But just like the depth of field effect, it's going to make a lot of other things on your screen blurry, and that's not a good thing if you're trying to play well. If you're running or if you're in a race, you really want to be able to see the people and cars around you as clear as possible. Not only that, but motion blur can actually give a lot of people headaches. So not only in GTA, but in almost every single game I play, I turn motion blur off straight away. Now, for my viewers in the United States, you probably don't need to know this, but but for people around the rest of the world, we can actually change our measurement system to metric. I get a lot of comments asking me why the minimap is showing kilometers instead of miles. And yes, I'm surprised how many people don't actually know this is a setting you can just change. This one is on Imperial by default, but for those of us who don't use the Imperial system, switch this over to metric, and this converts measurements to a system that we can more easily understand. For anyone on the current gen version, of the game, that's PS5 and Xbox Series X and S, there's actually a very simple graphic setting here, and you've got three options. By default, this option will be on Fidelity, but I would recommend switching it over to Performance or Performance RT. Fidelity will slightly improve your graphics, but it's going to cap your frame rate at 30 frames per second. By switching this over to Performance or Performance RT, that will increase your frame rate up to 60 frames per second. If you've never changed this setting, I would recommend changing it to performance and you will be blown away at how much smoother the game feels. Increasing your frame rate not only makes the game feel a lot better, but it also makes it a lot easier to play and you'll probably become a better player. Let's move into controls and we're going to start off with the sprint mode feature that was just added in 2023. For those of us that have found it very, very annoying having to spam X or A if you're on Xbox to sprint, we don't have to do that anymore. You can switch this over to hold to sprint so you only need to hold the button to sprint instead of tapping it. Not only will this make it a lot easier to run, but it'll probably preserve that button's lifespan, not gonna lie. The third person look dead zone setting is very important as well, and I would always set this one to zero. What this setting does is reduce or increase how hard you need to move your thumbstick to change targets with the auto locking system. By putting this to zero, it'll make it a lot easier to switch between targets and lock on to different targets if you want to. 
I don't know about you, but I find it really annoying when I'm trying to aim at a different target, but the game's auto lock is just so strong that it keeps me on that one target that I'm already locked onto. So changing this setting should make it a lot easier. Speaking of aim assist, always set it to assisted aim full. Now you can't actually change this in online. You have to go back to story mode and then set it to assisted aim full and then go back into online and it'll be saved. This will also make the auto aim system a lot easier to switch between targets, so definitely something you'll want to do. Vibration is something that's definitely personal preference. A lot of people like it, makes the game feel more immersive. But for performance, if you're trying to be a really good player for whatever reason, whether that's racing or PvP, having vibration on just makes it a little bit harder to get those fine adjustments on your analog sticks. This one's not really that important, but thought I'd throw it in anyway, in case you forgot that you wanted to change your vibration. Now for my PlayStation guys, I don't know about you, but the adaptive triggers in my opinion are so annoying, especially when I'm driving. If you don't know what the adaptive triggers are, you know when you're driving in GTA or shooting and the trigger becomes a lot harder to pull? Yeah, if you want to be good, I would recommend turning that off. The drive-by control type is something that I've gone back and forth on a lot over the years. You can change this between two different modes, aim and fire or just fire. And what I've landed on is putting it on only fire. This just makes it a lot easier when you're actually driving. You don't have to aim and then press a different button to fire. Just holding down L1 or LB will automatically shoot your gun whenever you're aiming. That way, when you're driving, you have an extra finger in order to hold the controller properly and drive your car. This one is definitely personal preference though. I know a lot of people who prefer aim and fire, but if you've never changed this setting, give it a go, change it, see how you like it. Moving into the camera tab, we're gonna look at the first person on foot FOV. By default, this is set pretty low and I would 100% recommend raising it. On your screen, you can see a before and after of the FOV set to zero and then set to 100. By increasing this to 100, you are going to be able to see so much more stuff. And in any video game, getting more information available to you on the screen is always a good thing. Some players find it a bit difficult to play on max FOV though. So I'm not saying you have to turn it all the way up to 100%, but I would definitely increase it from what it is by default. Let's talk about vehicle camera height. This is set to low by default, and in my opinion, low looks the best. But if we're talking about which one is the best for gameplay, that's probably high. You can see the difference on your screen here, and having it on high for me just makes it a little bit easier to drive. You can see a bit more as well, which is what a lot of this video has been about, just increasing how much you can actually see on your screen. So for that reason, I would recommend switching over to high. One that I don't hear people talk about a lot is first person combat role. I would turn this off. Now, if you play PvP, you know that first person is the way to go. It makes your movement a lot more precise. And if you've ever been in a PvP battle, good chance the other person is in first person. But by turning off your first person combat roll, this is what's going to happen when you roll. You see, it's going to put you in third person for a very split second and then switch you back to first. Why this is good is it gives you a lot more spatial awareness. If you have this on, when you roll, one, it's a bit disorientating, but two, you actually completely lose sight of your target for a split second. By letting the game switch you over to third person for that split second during your combat roll, you're going to be able to see exactly where your target is at all times, which is incredibly important in a PvP battle. First person head bobbing, turn this off. This basically just makes your screen shake and makes your camera bob exactly like your character's head is bobbing when they're walking. Having this on is very, very disorientating. It's gonna mess up your aim. So if you have this on, definitely turn it off. I think everyone should have this on the correct setting anyway, but for first person, third person cover, make sure this one's on. This makes it so that when you're in first person, you go into cover, it's gonna switch you over to third person while you're in cover. Very important because if you turn this off, you just won't won't be able to see where your target is at all. Finally, let's talk about optimizing your graphics if you're playing on PC. So basically, we're gonna try and get you as many frames per second as possible while still keeping your graphics as good as possible as well. Now, the folks over at Gamers Nexus actually did an in-depth study on this, so I'll leave a link to that in the description below and I'll explain it to you here. What I'm gonna do is tell you which of these settings will affect your FPS the most. So starting at number one is MSAA and it's actually 
actually recommended that you turn this completely off. By keeping this on, it will decrease the amount of jagged edges and make the edges of objects look a bit better. But for some reason, this really affects your frames, so they recommend you turn it off. Next is post FX quality. And this can actually change your FPS by 16 frames per second. So unless you're running on a very, very high-end PC, I recommend turning this down to normal or maybe high. Next is grass quality. Now, of course, this will only affect you when you're near grass, but still, this can change your frames by about 12 frames per second. So honestly, I would recommend turning this one right down to normal. The fourth most important is shader quality. And surprisingly enough, this actually doesn't have that much of an effect on your actual graphics, but it can drop your frames by about 12 frames per second. So I definitely recommend turning this one off of very high, maybe down to normal or high. Next is shadow quality. Quality, you definitely don't want this on ultra either normal or high will increase your frames by about seven to eight and then finally is reflection quality the difference between normal and ultra is about six frames per second so might want to turn this one down to normal and for whatever reason the rest of them really don't affect your frames that much even something like texture quality the folks over at gamers nexus did a test on this and they had it on very high compared to normal and there was only one frame per second difference. So you can actually turn your textures right up and that shouldn't affect your frames at all. And the same goes for just about every other setting on this list. The changes you're gonna get are maybe like two frames per second and that's really not gonna make much of a difference. If you change the ones that we've told you to change in this video here, you should be getting a lot more frames and you can just do whatever you want with the rest of them. So we'll wrap the video up there. If you enjoyed, leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more stuff like this, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.